I used photography in my dissertation because the work is in response to proliferating images of children online, in schools, everywhere. Images that are made and produced and circulated by adults without children's input into them. So this work really is a natural response to those images because the photographs are made by children. And um, the way I see it is that the images that we produce and circulate about children are really a proxy for what we think about children and the stories that we tell about children that I think are very partial realities for children themselves. My dissertation looks at the ways that young children represent themselves through photographs. Um, this is really in response to the ways that young children are photographed by adults and the world around them without their say, without their ability to edit or delete. So I wanted to see how young children, very young children ages two to five, would represent themselves, what are the kinds of images they would take, and what kinds of stories would they tell about their own lives. So I discovered, I mean, I discovered things that I did already know, except with more specificity. So, you know, the way that I think about young children is that they are already full, complex human beings with their own desires, their own interests, their own um, fears, and that they're not a monolithic group, right? So the photographs that the children produce demonstrated how their lives and their images reflect their cultural upbringings, religion, race, ethnicity, gender. So instead of thinking of kids as sort of these empty blank slates, empty vessels, blank slates, children were showing me that they um, really reflect their, their cultural identities. I would say that my, my dissertation looks quite traditional. It takes the form of a manuscript. So it includes narratives about the children. It has, you know, the typical structure of an introduction statement of the problem, a literature review methodology. And then when we get into the findings, it includes the children's images. And each chapter takes a different approach at looking at childhood. So one chapter is looking at the spaces and places of childhood. Another uh, chapter looks at the objects that are in, that are engaged that children are engaged with in their day to day lives. Another are the kinds of relationships that children foster and um, are nurtured by. So it's looking at different axes of children's lives in a written and photographic format. So the photos are all made by the children. Other things that I've produced from the dissertation, my presentations, um, articles. Uh, try to tell stories um, with the children's images and their narratives, so they they might look and feel different. Getting to the f different forms of the work, I think, involved looking closely at the photographs. Uh, so would be, what are the children, what are the photographs showing us? Are they showing us images of, for example, the city in which children traverse? So one of the things that I did was I would take photographs and place them in um, our tiny little apartment, just sort of arranging them spatially and, and in as much as I could temporarily um, to see, to get a sense of uh, life from children's perspectives, right? So arranging the, the images and then making a video of the images sort of, it doesn't, I can't fully inhabit you know, the life of a child, but I can at least attempt to through just trying to play with the photos in different ways. So tracing is another way of, of trying to get closer to the photographs. So I would say just to get back at your question of how, how I developed these different modes of working with the images, it was really looking closely. It was listening to the images by, um, by interacting with them in ways that are not just looking, right? Photographs we typically think of are objects for looking at, but I think photographs can also be objects that we that we um, play with materially, uh, that we inhabit imaginatively and creatively. So the looking in much closer ways allows me to kind of develop other uh, ways of thinking with the images. One of the things that's really, really important for me is 
and, and in a way sort of paralyzes me is how do I tell a child's story in a way that's true to what's the story that they want me to tell potentially and how do I tell it in a way that actually allows people to see two-year-olds as really complex, as really uh, intellectual, as interesting. I think when people listen to these stories, they hardly think of these children as two. They really think of them as older, you know, and so it's honoring um, their utterances as more than just utterances. It's actually like full narratives. I take a lot of pride in, in sort of the presentations that I give about children because I'm trying to use, how, you know, the Google Slides um, and its effects in a way that actually slows down our sense of time in the way that children slow down our sense of time. So I think it's just sort of playing with the the, the capacities of the tool that I'm working with to be able to tell the story, whether it's making a video or making a presentation or um, doing something else. When I'm working with children and photographs and their photographs, I do try as much as possible to include them in the, the process of analysis. Children don't always want to engage in that. And that's part of respecting children as, you know, researchers too, is understanding where and when and how they might want to enter into the space. So there are children who have analyzed, actually coded. Sorry, you is a child that I think about. Um, she's a child that's actually coded images with me, um, where we're sorting the images together. I have had children who I've tried to create you know, videos and books for who, you know, they, they appreciate it, I think, you know, they say, thank you, you know, but I'd like to move on to my, with my life now and go play. Um, and that's, I think that that's, you know, great for me to be able to see that what children value isn't always what I value, you know, and what researchers value. We have all this, we talk a lot about reliability and validity and member checking and I was trying to subscribe to all those things as a, as a doctoral researcher, but realizing that children's ideas of member checking and validity and reliability are very different. I had always been a teacher who took photographs. I took a, quite a lot of photographs and I love uh, looking at photographs. I've always been inclined towards the visual. Um, but as a teacher, I was constantly photographing and video recording students. I've often spent time after work just sort of watching and looking again at photos and, and videos. And never really quite put together that all of those um, photos and videos were created by me, right? And so they were always from my perspective. It was always from the teacher's perspective, really. I took a course with Wendy Luttrell at CUNY Grad Center in 2013. And in that course, we worked with images that she had created or that children in her work had created. They were eight, um, eight to 10 at first, and then she worked with them later. And it just got me to think about, well, if she can do this work with older children, why wouldn't I be able to do this work with young children, right? And I think that speaks to um, how I think about young children. Can I say that I was, fully confident that I wouldn't understand what they would produce. No, they're, you know, right before the dissertation, the actual um, methods and the collect data collection, I was quite worried that I wouldn't understand what an image meant, right? And I mean, there are still images that I don't fully know the story behind and I'm probably never will. Um, but so I decided to, to partake in this, this methodology because I wanted to see how it could help me get closer to children and children's perspectives. And it did, it did in a way that even as a teacher who spends a lot of time observing and a lot of time thinking about children, the images show me something different because they're from children's perspective. I can't deny that, they're, that children have made these images and that they're telling those stories. I chanced upon this, this mode of inquiry um, tracing by playing around with an iPad and uh, an application called, I think it's called Paper. Um, I might have a number to, to it too, but I, I chanced on this by just playing around with photographs that the children in my study had taken. I, I placed the photos in the application and started tracing over them. And as I was tracing, I noticed aspects of the images I had never, ever noticed before. 
um, namely people in the photos that were important to the child that I had actually not realized. Um, and that once I realized who was in an image or what was in an, an image, I could piece together other aspects of this child that I hadn't fully realized before by piecing that those aspects of those images together with narratives that the child had, had shared maybe even a month prior, right? So something about working with two to five-year-olds is that you're actually piecing together narrative fragments that occur over long periods of time. You know, something comes up one day that doesn't come up again for another three and a half weeks. And my job as a researcher is to be able to piece those together. So tracing allowed me to at, like to, to grasp another aspect of, of that child's life and their visual perspective. I will also say that it was inspired by one of my colleagues, Victoria Ressler. She was at CUNY Grad Center and now she's at Rhode Island College. Victoria was working with uh, teachers and activists, activist teachers actually. She was um, working with some of their video footage of them talking about what it meant to be a teacher in a classroom at a time when neoliberal standards were really imposing certain ideas of measurement and standardization on, on youth. So she started doing tracing. She was, she was tracing over their lips, um, so it was slightly different. She was also doing some work in classrooms and rubbing materials to get a sense of the materiality of the, the materials. It's a little different, but it was still inspired by her. A challenge of working with children's photographs is not quite knowing what an image is doing or how it's working or what it's showing us. Um, that was a major anxiety of embarking on this research. While I believe that two, three, four-year-olds have a lot to say, I wasn't always sure that I was equipped to be able to understand what they were saying, especially through a mode like photograph taken on their terms. Um, so that I would say was a, a big challenge of just being able to, to, to know that the research process would take care of that. I think photographs are personal objects, right? They're both personal and they can also be political. So having a child give you a photograph they've taken um, requires a certain sensibility from me to step outside of my adult ways of looking and into children's ways of looking as much as possible. And it always involves, whether it's a photograph made by an adult or a child, it always involves some degree of, um, it's some subjectivity, right? That I'm, that I'm looking from my own perspective. And I think uh, I'm challenged by how do I put that aside, if I even put that aside, um, in order to be able to grasp like what the child is putting out there. The most important thing for me is to tell stories that children would say, yes, that's my story. The advice that I would want to give students who are in, want to engage in multimodal research is to really think about the purpose of it. Why are you choosing this mode or these modes? For whose benefit and in what service um, are you engaging with these modes for your research? Is it, I think that there's a lot of value in experimenting with modes, but I also worry that sometimes it moves us away from what our participants want from this work. So I, I think for me, that's the most important thing. So I think about Victoria Ressler, uh, who is a youth studies uh, professor at Rhode Island College who works with collaging and other um, experimental forms of art in her work. I also work closely with Vivek Vilenki, who's at Indiana University, and he does work with photos as well. He works with youth um, and photo photography, and he's also put together exhibitions of passport photos, for example, as a way to help people think about um, the kinds of images that we live with that are that are day-to-day -day images that actually hold a lot of meaning um, for you know for others. 
Um, he's also done work with taking images of refugees and immigrants' belongings. Um, they're, they're curating it, and he's photographing those. Another way to kind of get at somebody else's perspectives on their own lives and, and um, what's important to them. When you look at my work, hopefully you're seeing the creator, the real creator, as the child and not me who's just trying to translate it. Once I finished this dissertation, I did do an iteration of this study again in Texas in 2019 uh, when I lived there. And that was really important for me to do as a way to see how I could do this work in a classroom with children that I didn't know as well. Uh, because my, for, my dissertation was actually done at a site that I was very familiar with, and I had actually been a teacher there. And some of the children, I had been their caregiver, um, their teacher, or, or you know, a nanny since they were babies. Uh, so in a way, that made it difficult, but it also um, made it easier to sort of like develop relationships with the children and their families. So I wanted to try this methodology again in Texas with a within a classroom of children I didn't know very well. So I did that. I'm actually still in the process of analyzing a lot of that data. I've just written something on um, a photograph of a toilet and a photograph of poop inside the toilet. That was a really important piece for me to write because it wasn't just a photograph of a toilet and just wasn't a photograph of poop. It was actually a photograph of competence. Um, in the face of an administration that did not see this child as competent. So, I mean, that's an example of how a child's image actually can is so much more than what we see at face value. So I'm still working on the analysis of those images. I would like to try to think about this methodology and uh, with my next line of research, which is having to do with children and their animal relations, their non-human animal relations. So I'm trying to think about how can I still use images? And again, this gets at the whole idea of, is an image actually the right mode for this particular, the next research? So, but it is something that, yeah, so it's, some, it's tricky, right? I really want to work with images. I wanna continue working with images as long as I possibly can until I'm um, bored with it, I guess. But I also wanna make sure that it aligns up with the ideas that I'm trying to work, grapple with. The data management of a multimodal project, which I did not mention in the panel, I don't think, is, is overwhelming. So I have images in, you know, in photo albums um, at my house. There's also the preschool room where the work took place in 2016. I also gifted them with photo albums of the children's images. The children also received their, a set of their own images digitally and print-wise. Also, my dissertation committee members, they each got a framed image um, from of one of the kids. But I'm still trying to figure out what to do with all the images. And I don't know, I don't think that I, I guess I don't think that everything needs to be done with, something needs to be done with everything, right? So um, that's something to, for me to think about.